M1 Global presents you see, check the concentration in the eye of Smolder at the Komkevich. You see, Smolder is a player from Estonia. He represents the club They have a foot of difference in height and weigh almost the same. Yeah. That's a big difference. Yeah. The excellent Smolder looks a lot more relaxed. He does, he does. I think that he, um, he feels that his, his size advantage, his reach advantage is going to make a big difference in this fight. It's definite, definite advantage for him. And he doesn't feel that the, um, the difference in their experience is going to be making much of a difference, which is interesting. And Marco Broyson, the referee for yeah. this fight, is about to begin. And here we go. Semi-final of M1 selection for 2012. Short block by Komkin. There's a huge difference in size for these guys. Yeah. Probably not as much as when Komkin fought Stefan Struva, but still quite a big difference. And you, you hear the ring squeaking. <laughs> Nothing tests the strength of a ring. <laughs> the engineering of a ring is as good as, as big, big heavyweights. Yeah, but um, uh, Marco Brusen always checks the ring before the fight starts. And very important. Very, very often the ropes has to be tightened a little more. The lowest rope has to be uh, tensed in a way that if the fighters fall down, um, they can't hurt their neck. So if the right. neck is on the lowest rope, the, so the lowest rope, if you put your foot on it, you right. must be able to press it down to the to the, the mat. To the mat. Right. Uh, the higher ropes, say so the third round from the top, uh, if you sit on it, it has to go have to go that deep down because otherwise the fighters fall out. Oh, oh. and there come Big and right hand now he's and now he's escaping. There. He's escaping <laughs> out of the ring. Oh, Smolder was protesting, getting hit in the back of the head. But certainly that right hand from Komkin put him down briefly for a couple of seconds. Definitely. As Komkin jumped and tried to finish the fight from the top position. And then he, he, crawled, he crawled out of the ring. Something that, that isn't allowed in M1 rules, but certainly fighters try and make use of the fact that they can do that sometimes. This was obviously the first goal. It was. And now the, the doctor's looking at And in fact, part. small rep was not allowed to hang over the ropes and punch him while he was outside also. Yes. So both should get warning in that. So let's see what Marco Rosen is doing. Small rep has a small cut in the corner of his eye. I think no warning for none of them. Uh, you, you see, he's telling them. You understand? You understand? No go out. <laughs> you see? Yeah, Marco chooses not to Bro, give a yellow guard to neither of them. He warns Smolder if not to go out, and he warns Komkin not to hit the opponent when it's beyond the ropes yeah. of the ring. So Komkin doesn't seem to have problems with the, with the reach. Yeah, and now you see that Smolder oh. is angered. Huh? He's is, angry now. He's angry, he's still bleeding. Now he knows that it's serious business meant by uh, Komkin. Big swinging punches from Smolder, nothing lands. And Komkin just takes a little bit of distance to, to gather his bearings and comes back in. There's a big welt on the back of Komkin's left leg from a Smolder of low kick, and Smolder manages to almost knock out Komkin. One of those punches really got through. Komkin's legs gave out, but he came back and is now going for a double. Smolder is really, really bleeding out of the cut in the corner of his eye. And has Komkin in a reasonably, reasonably tight gear team. Komkin is going... And, and you see this because he's putting so much tension, you see that the blood is gulping out now. Eh? Because he... He puts so much pressure that the pressure is going up to his head and then you see it's pouring down. Check. Pushing the blood out. It's pushing the blood out with and every heartbeat. 
Michael Brosnan stops the momentarily stops the fight because of lack of action and restarts again in the middle of the room. And it starts to look nasty with all the blood, but no reason to stop the Funky fight because doesn't it's... seem to be wanting to exchange on the feet too much with uh, no. with Smoldereth. He keeps clinching and looking, looking like he's going to work for a takedown, but not not necessarily working for the takedown. These guys are big, big boys, and this this Ooh. fight head kick attempt. This fight has had. A lot of energy put into it. It's been a very fast fight. They fought on the ground. They fought standing up. And I think it's um, uh, it's inevitable that these guys are going to get a little bit tired. That's a lot of muscle to move oxygen to. The action is tempered a little again. And just as I said, that Smolder has launched a left kick to the head. Actually, it connected, but he just took it. Comkin just took it. I think that's what comes of and having no neck. Yeah. <laughs> and Komkin is saying, come on, come on. Yeah. So in a, in a stand-up fight, you know, what should be Komkin's tactic for getting close to Smolderev so that he can actually The only thing damage? that he can do is go down, go deep down and crouch forward because right. it's more difficult to punch downward right. than to punch slightly upward. You also have to try to work with the overhead swing because uh, Smolderev is so much taller, but on the other hand, Smolderev is keeping him at bay with the low kicks. And um, check, you know, the left hand from Smolderev is also doing the damage. So, in fact, we can give a lot of advice, but it's different if you stand there yourself. Yeah. And yeah. The, the, the technical advice would be for an, uh, Komkin to try to cover the distance by going in. Uh, and on the other hand, check. You see, what Smolderev is doing is very smart. He connects time after time. It's just as you said, it's because Komkin has no neck that he can take the punches. Yeah. Certainly, Smolder's background in kickboxing is, um, uh, is very obvious here. He feels comfortable on his, on his feet. First round lands. Who would you say took that one? I think it's more than Even though the damage was done by him. Um, uh, like and thing. at the very start. Yeah, he had the but rest. you can't look at the dim, just the damage. If it's just the damage, then of course it's not going to the fight. But uh, check here, in this case, he's crawling out. And now, Smolder is, uh, is going up in the wrong side. By if Pumpkin had not done that... Uh, he, he might have very well been knocked out. Um, yes, then Smolder might have been knocked out. But if Pumpkin had a follow-up... Right. Um, the referee might have given Smolder a yellow card. Right. And now he chooses not to give either of them a yellow card. Right. And here we see Jeff Monston, who's going to be fighting Alexei Lenik later on tonight, getting his uh, getting his hands wrapped. Jeff seems very relaxed, listening to his iPod. And Eyes closed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's um he's taking it easy. That's going to be a great fight. Both guys are really, really good grapplers. Monson's very decorated. Elenik is very decorated also. Looking forward to that one later on tonight. And now we go for round number two in the smaller ref Comkin fight. And again, you see that Comkin is trying to get in, but smaller ref is keeping him at distance. And even the left hook of Comkin is not long enough to get to the head of Smolder F. See, it's unbelievable how much can a guy take. Because I can't imagine that the left hooks of Smolder F are, are weak. He um uh, Comkin is certainly showing a lot of a lot of heart. I think uh, at some point, Komkin is, uh, uh, sorry, Smolder is going to be asking himself, what else do I need to do? That's what I mean. In order to win this fight. And he's starting to bleed again. There is a lot of blood. A lot of blood for uh, M1, more than we usually see. Normally we don't see that this much blood. In the no, no, no. But the doctor can't stop it in this case because the cut is small and it's not on a dangerous spot. Yeah. 
You know, what is the reason that, that fights are usually stopped because of cuts? Um, the cut has to be at the place or the spot where the doctor thinks that it can be dangerous. For instance, there is a certain spot on the eyebrow right. uh, where there is a nerve. Right. And if you hit that spot and it's cut, even if it's a small cut, the doctor can decide to stop it because if you get, get a second or a third punch on it, right. you can get, how they call it, a drooping eye. Right. Your right. eyelid will go down and it won't be able to come up again. Right. So some, that's the reason that the doctor sometimes says you have to stop the fight and the fighter is very disappointed because right. no, it's, it's only a small, small cut and it doesn't bleed that much. Right. I wondered why the doctor was stopping it, so I asked the doctor once, why right. did you do it? Right. He said there is a certain nerve there and right. if we don't stop the fight and he gets hit again on that spot, he has the risk to have a lifelong drooping eye. Right. And nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. And it's the doctor's responsibility to intervene at the moment that he thinks it's dangerous. And in the M1 rules, the referees always have to follow the advice of the doctor. Sure. It's sure. a binding advice. Sometimes we don't agree. Even sure. um, the referees say, hey, why did the doctor stop? And well, it can happen that uh, M1 invites a doctor that has not that much experience in the martial arts because we're dependent on doctors that are invited if they are available. Sure, yeah? sure. And nowadays this won't happen because M1 established the real name and they established so many ex um, experience and they have so many connections in the medical world that they invite doctors that they know that have an experience in martial arts or in any fighting arts. Well, so it's they won't so stop important. the fight that early. It's so important. Because you know it and I know it that in the past we experienced that the doctor stopped the fight for hardly anything. And you can't go against it because he's the doctor, he's responsible. We have to follow him. Yes. Certainly that's true. And always, always we err on the side of caution because we, we don't want for things to happen. It is a sport after all. And, uh, it is not like a death. They can always come back, their careers always continue. That's it. And so we prefer for them to be safe. And I can imagine that the fighters are very, very disappointed because they experience no. other fights where no, 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 there were no, no, more experienced no, doctors no, 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 at the ringside. No, 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 but if a doctor, um, and in Holland I experienced that female doctors that were there, they, it was, they thought it so gruesome that just because there was a lot of blood, they stopped the fight. And then when you wipe it off, there was, was actually nothing. There was actually nothing. It was a nose that was bleeding. The nose was not even broken. And the doctor said, stop, stop, stop. And then we said, no, 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 no. just watch it again. The nose is not broken. And then she looked at us and she said, you mean it? We must continue. I asked, is it dangerous? No, but it looks so horrible. I said, no, is it dangerous? She said, no, Sometimes. it's not dangerous. So we, had, we, we could talk to the doctor, but there we had the opportunity to talk to the doctor. You know what I mean? Sometimes, if it's on the other side of the ring, you cannot tell the doctor that she has to watch the danger and not the blood. Sometimes it looks bad, but it isn't dangerous. And that brings us to the end of the second round, which um, uh, saw the guys standing in the ring, exchanging punches, mostly without anything really, really interesting happening for the whole round. Uh, much of the same uh, as we saw in the first round, Denise Molderev really making use of the fact that he's much, much taller, that he has a much longer reach. He's keeping Denise Komkin at bay. Komkin is not able to get in on the inside as much as he could in the first round. And um, uh, Smolderev for sure is, is, is using his size very smart. And the blood that we see pouring in round two is just because of the cut that he got in round one. In so the first round. no real damage done by the Smolderev no. in, uh, in the second round. And as we see smaller, it's, um, uh, see, the cut is it's, really it's small. Not a, it's not a big cut. And here's Rashid Magomedov, who is going to be fighting Yasubi Inamoto later on tonight. They're fighting for the M1 Welterweight Championship. Uh, Rashid Magomedov is, is one of the premier mixed martial artists in Russia. A guy who has only been beaten once in his career. Uh, welterweight, very, very, very experienced. Very, um, very nice guy. Very also, nice guy. You know, he's very nice not guy. An, uh, how you call it, he's not timid. But, um, you know, he, he shows always a lot of he's respect. He's quiet and he's respectful. He's polite, and respectful. He's a very nice guy. Someone who obviously likes fighting as a sport, not because he likes hurting people. That's it.
and here we go for round three. Komkin has a very high guard. Obviously, he doesn't want any of those. And this coming. was interesting. Komkin trying to go down. Smolder did attempt to. And to, if to you, do you try to go down. down for a double leg takedown with this length difference, you have to bend up real deep. I could imagine that in the Komkin tried to do that. I never expected in the Smolder to go down for, sure, for a double for leg. Sure. And this is more what I expect from the Smolder. Smolder is just using the, um, the, the left jab yeah. and the left yeah. hook. He's keeping Komkin at bay as much as he can. As soon as Komkin gets in, he just lets it fly. He, tri he tries to grab him in the neck, but because of the fact that there is hardly any neck, <laughs> Komkin just has to bend over and he slips out of it. When there is no neck, it's certainly hard. <laughs> you can see the trapeze is there. It's like a turtle almost. And Komkin looks like he's got a bit of a cut also around his nose. Something that smaller opened up just yeah. in this round. But it's small. It's not really bleeding. And these guys for sure look like they are, uh, they're getting a little bit tired. Not exhausted by any, any means, but a little bit tired. It's, that slowed um, down. The pace slows down a bit it's, now. It's the third round. They're, they're big boys. It's a lot of muscle to get oxygen to. And, but to be honest, I think that the pace for a heavyweight fight is quite an, uh, intense. It is, it is. Oh, oh. spinning, spinning, spinning back, back kick from Kong. Yeah, very nice, very nice. With his body shape, it's, it's interesting to see him kick at all. Yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't seem like he should. And I have the impression that Komkin is a bit more uh, wasted now. More tired? More tired, yes. Yeah. He looks, he looks like he's a little bit tired. It's also a little bit of frustration, I think, because whatever he tries, he can't get into Smolder as a reach. It's, it's, can't pass it's the certainly reach. difficult. Smolder yeah. is, is just firing straight right hands, left, left jabs, anything to keep Komkin from getting close and also possibly do some damage. Yeah. And he's managing to do some damage because the cut at the nose, it's high on the nose bridge of... Uh, of Komkin, but it's nothing. Oh, 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 that was a spinning back fist. With that another missed. spin, and, and it's the because end. it's because of the length difference, because it went just over the head of Smolder effort of the Komkin. And Komkin tries his own yeah. and gets a nice left hook as an answer from Smolder. So these guys are going toe for toe. And, and what do you think the advantage at this moment is after uh, in round three, if you compare round one and round two? I think round one was for uh, small draft despite the cut. For sure, for sure. And round number two, yeah. I think was, round number two was, was much closer. Yeah. Um, I think that significant damage wasn't really done by either fighter. But I think small draft was the slightly busier fighter and he managed to keep Komken off him with quite a lot of jabs yeah. and straight right hands. Uh, so you could about, say that Smolderev About just the way it is going now in round number three. Around about. You could say that Smolderev is, um, is two rounds up. Yeah. And then Komkin advancing, 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 but not able to do any real damage. The, um, the size difference is yeah, it's too big. It's, yeah, the length difference and the, the weight is about the same, but it's the length. One never knows, of course, what the judges see. I think that, that Smolder was probably ahead two rounds, but the judges could think that Komkin is ahead. Yeah. It's happened before. Yeah. It wouldn't be the first time. It wouldn't be the first time. time. Time after time he's connecting now. Smolder is connecting with some punches. Komkin seems a little bit stuck. But now he's advancing. Yeah, you see, it's, if, if Smolder is extending his left arm, I wonder if uh, Komkin would reach with his legs. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much what it looks like. He's smiling. Like, come on, come on, is that all you have? Good right hand. Good is that right all you hand. have? Yeah. But he's shaking his head again and check. Check, you see, he's smiling. This is just... <laughs> yeah. No guard, no guard. He's I just can't. showing him. Come on, touch me, touch me if you can. I can't do any damage. Yeah. Come on, touch like, me, touch me if you can. Yeah. No guard and he's advancing and Smolder is backing up. I think Smolderev knows that he's ahead and that he's trying to watch the time and making that's it. That's that's yeah. the end of the fight.
both fighters cut. They shake hands and they go. Now you can see that this is interesting. You see that uh, Komkin is limping towards his corner while right. in the fight. He never showed that his legs were hurt. I think that is that is something that we see all the time in mixed martial arts, where the fighters do everything they can to, not to um, show that they are hurt. Is, yeah, not to show they're hurt. That's one of the often uh, the, the joke is made. That's one of the main differences between uh, football or soccer and mixed martial arts. That soccer players, football players, they speak. They they do whatever they can to, to show to, that they are hurt. To show that they hurt when they're really not hurt. And mixed martial arts fighters do everything they can to show that they're not hurt when really they are hurt. Yeah. Wow, See? that's such a pronounced limp. Yeah. And we never saw anything like that in the fight. Nothing close to it. Very interesting. Komkin is obviously a very tough guy. The amount of punishment that he took from Small Girl, uh, and was the, astonishing. Was astonishing. And the amount of time that the judges are taking taking to, to make a decision obviously means that they have um, uh, they have they have a lot to think about. Yeah. Maybe this one is going to be closer than we thought. I think so. And the decision has fallen. And the Komkin very, very slowly makes his way to the center of the ring. Still doesn't want to show that he's he the... he's not standing on his right right leg at all. Yeah, he's... his right leg is not carrying any weight. Победа одержал спортсмен из клуба Александр Невский. Okay. Wow. Wow. Split decision. Split decision. Split decision. Denis takes, takes, the, takes the win. Yeah, I said the judges are unpredictable. Yep. Split decision. Interesting. Wow, Komkin is hardly able to walk. 